Hey everybody, back to get today to finish our series of uh, ranking the number one hits from 1965 through 1975. This is the last in our series. So we're doing 1975 and a little hiatus. Some things came up where we couldn't uh, run the series for a couple of weeks, but we're back to finish it out in style. 1975 here with Randall Nelson. Randy, uh, the 70s and the mid 70s, all the, the, the rock music was fine and the album rock and the FM rock was fine. The, you can see the dwindling of uh, the number of quality hit tunes on the radio, in my, in my opinion. So, and this is a good place to end our series uh, in 75. I don't think we can take it any further. There's 35 number one songs that we're going to rank here. Many of them uh, forgettable or kind of mediocre at best. There's, there's some good stuff at the top of our list. So, good to finish it out. How you been? I know you went on vacation. It's your first video back, right? Or, First or second? Well, second. I guess we did that Springsteen. That's right. We, that's, uh, that's it's great to be back. Um, I guess, like you said, there's quite a bit of mediocre mediocrity in this year. Yeah. Well, there are there are a few good songs, but uh, not as not as much awful drac as in 1974. <laughs> but it's still not a great year. Yeah. All right, cool. We're going to uh, take these in batches of five. We're going to go 35 to 31, starting with Randy, and then back, pass it back to me, and then the next five until we get to the top 10. And then we'll go one at a time, and then we'll do our five honorable mentions at the end. Uh, see how it goes. So, Randy, 35 right. to 31 from 1975. Well, my number 35 is Fly, Robin, Fly by the Silver Convention. And mostly because it just annoyed me to death. I could not stand hearing that song on the radio. Uh, and it still bothers me. It's this song and Anita Ward's uh, Ring My Bell. I just, oh, yeah. It just like kills my ears. And I'm gonna fly, Robin, fly up, up to the sky. I just cringe anytime I hear it. So that's number 35. 34, which probably is a worse song, but. It didn't bother me as much as love will keep us together. Captain and Tennille. Um, you had Daryl Dragon with his captain hat and Tony Tennille singing like it's a Broadway song. And um, these guys were never at the cool table at school. I can tell you wow. that. But, yeah. And they, you, they, they ruin a Neil Sedaka song. That's, that's hard to say. That's hard to do. <laughs> but anyway, number 33, he don't love you like I Love You by Tony Orlando and Don, which Jerry Butler is one of my favorite singers. And he had an R&B hit with this. They speed up the course. And to me, they just ruin a great song and kind of make it pop drivel to me. So that's my 33. 32, Please Mr. Postman, The Carpenters. Uh, they destroy another classic, at least in my eyes. Uh, it was the first number one hit for Motown with the Marvelettes. Right. And this is the third song in a row that I'm using that, you know, was a hit earlier in the 60s. But, uh, you know, at least when the Beatles covered it, they gave it some energy. And this, they, to me, they just make it boring, the Carpenter's version. But, mm -hmm. uh, 31 is Mandy by Barry Manilow. And actually, this is another cover, too, because it was originally called Brandy, released by Scott English, a British singer. But there's... and Barry Manilow's version, there's like, there's no hint of sadness. It's got this cheerfulness and this lush orchestration and not any different than any other Barry Manilow song to me. Right. That's my 31. Yeah. Uh, I think we're off to a flying start. We have a lot of the same songs here near the bottom. My my bottom number 35 is Fly, Robin, Fly. That, that easily stuck out as the worst song for me. <laughs> uh, German right. Euro disco nonsense, uh, just lyrically inept. It's got two two phrases: "Fly, Robin, fly up, up to the sky." That's all it says. The whole song. It's just dismissible garbage. Uh, Thirty four. Uh, I put, "Hey, won't you play another somebody done somebody wrong song by DJ Thomas?" Not a favorite of mine. Uh, country-ish pop fluff. I like B.J. Thomas, some of his material, but this is not one of them. Uh, it was performed on The Muppet Show. 
uh, back in the day, covered by Alvin and the Chipmunks. So it, it's just not a real deep song, obviously. And I put it at 34. Number 33, this might surprise some folks out there. My Eyes Adored You by Frankie Valley. Uh, another soft pop ballad originally recorded by the Four Seasons. Uh, easy listening, disposable waste. I mean, I, I, I haven't heard it in years, but I'm not sure it would ring a, a bell as a good song now. Number 32 is one that you had, He Don't Love You Like I Love You by Tony Orlando and Dawn. You mentioned Jerry Butler, who did a great version of it. Uh, you wrote uh, Pop, I put Pop Pablum. You wrote Pop whatever. It was. We have the same thoughts on it. Uh, I, I just, you know, I'm not a Tony Orlando and Dawn fan. <laughs> um, and another waste of a song here, a cover. Please, Mr. Postman by the Carpenters, number, uh, what, 32, was it? 30, I'm, all, I'm sorry about that, 31. Just, I like some of the Carpenters' uh, saccharine sweet songs back in the day, but this, this cover is just junk, garbage. You mentioned the Beatles. They did a presentable co cover of it, but the Marvelettes still have the best version for me and always will. All right, uh, my 30, you mentioned it already, and that's My Eyes Adored You by Frankie Valley, kind of the national stalker anthem. Is it, he's an adult, and he's dreaming about that one time he carried the books home for the schoolgirl in fifth grade. He says, my eyes adored you, though I never laid a hand on you. Well, thank goodness. That's really? But anyway, that's, that's my 30. 29, Laughter in the Rain, Neil Sadaka. If Peter Allen is the poor man's Neil Sadaka, is Neil Sadaka the poor man's Barry Manilow? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that goes with anyway. It's got a nice melody, but there's like no emotion in it. And I don't really care for the singing that much. No. So 29. 28. I have Island Girl by Elton John. It's my least favorite Elton John song, but it got to number one. It's a song about a tall Jamaican sex worker. Sample lyrics are like, well, she's black as coal, but she burned like fire and she wrapped herself around you like a well-worn tire. I say, come on, Bernie. You yeah. can do better. Uh, number 27 is Bad Blood, Neil Sedaka. You know, Island Girl knocked this song out of the number one spot. Neil Sedaka kind of had a resurgence this year, like, he had Captain and Tennille doing that one song. He had Laughter in the Rain. And he, he had this song. He had, of course, a lot of it had to do with Elton John because he signed with his label. And this song sounds like kind of a second-rate Elton John song. And Elton John does sing back up on the song. 26 is The Hustle, Van McCoy and the Soul City Symphony. This is when disco was really riding high. And the Hustle was actually a dance that predated this song. You know, James Brown had Hustle Dead on it and the Fatback Band had Spanish Hustle, but this was the one that really hit it big. The right place, right time, as he never was heard from again. And he died of a heart attack four years later at the young age of 39. All right. Yeah, that's 26. All right, uh, for number 30, uh, I'm with you on Neil Sedak on the comeback. I have laughter in the rain. You know, the early Neil you can live with, it's early rock and roll, and he's, you know, Calendar Girl and whatever he's talking about back then. And, uh, but this this is just uh, mediocre pop at best. Uh, I wasn't buying into the comeback. I don't know how he ever got two number one hits in the 70s. It just <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I hated the tune then, I still do. Uh, released on Elton John's Rocket Records, so they were buddies somehow. Uh, the next song is number 29, Bad Blood. You mentioned Elton sang back up on this. Neil Sedaka again, three weeks at number one. So that tells you how hurting the charts were. Um, amazingly, this is the most successful song in Sedaka's whole career, Bad Blood. As far as weeks at number one, it's hard to believe. Uh, Steve Cropper of Booker T and EMGs plays guitar. Leland Sklar, the renowned bass player on there. So they have good musicians playing somehow, but 
Uh, it still doesn't make a difference to me. I'm going to bury it at number 29. Number 28 is the wonderful trio, soft rock trio of Hamilton, Joe Frank, and Reynolds, Falling, Fallen in Love, just forgettable fodder. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a staple on the soft rock uh, channels back in those days. I like their 71 hit better, Don't Pull Your Love, but uh, neither one is nothing to write home about. Uh, number 27 is The Captain and Tennille, Love Will Keep Us Together. Uh, they parlayed this hit into a variety TV series in the summer of 76, 77. They, I think they may have replaced Sonny and Cher or somebody, but they had a, a show for a couple of years with him with his captain hat and her with the big smiley teeth and the happy-go-lucky attitude uh, written by Neil Sedaka and Howard Greenfield. Uh, what can I say? Not a fan. And number 26, Mandy, easy, another easy listening soft rock uh, love song by Barry Manilow. Again, he uh, started out with doing jingles for commercials. That's how where he got his, his, uh, his start in the business. McDonald's, Pepsi, Band-Aid, brand Band-Aids. Uh, that's where he, he wrote all those tunes that you heard on the commercials in the 70s. And somehow he parlayed it into a pop career with Mandy. And he had a string of hits. You got to give him credit for that. But I wasn't listening to it uh, after the 70s at all. And it just didn't hold up. It was he, he caught lightning in a bottle with, with it, the way it is. So that was my number 26. All right. 25. I hope Gary won't get upset at me, but it's Have You Never Been Mellow, Olivia Newton John. <laughs> and I do like some Livy Newton John songs. It's just that's not happened to be one of right. them. Uh, and shouldn't it be Have You Ever Been Mellow? I don't understand that. I don't understand that either. But the, the song is mellow and it just kind of bores me. But uh, that's my 25. 24, That's the Way I Like It by Casey and the Sunshine Band. I'm just not a huge disco fan. I saw someone comment that those who ate disco, this song would be exhibit A. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's got a chanty chorus and it's got the horns. But to me, the percussion kind of drowns out the verses on that if you really listen to it. But that's my 24. 23, I won't upset you on this one. I'm so sorry. John Denver, uh, it's kind of over melancholic, uh, not to be confused with the Brenda Lee song, I'm sorry, but right. it's like some of the lyrics on here though, like, I'm sorry for the people in China. I'm kind of sorry for the people I had to listen to this song. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. And I do like John Denver, I actually have some John Denver albums, but. Yeah, oh, he's got some good stuff, yeah. But I just don't like a lot of his number ones. Number 22, uh, Get Down Tonight by KC and the Sunshine Band. <clears throat> Big fans of disco would have this much higher. It's, you know, it's a party song. It does have some great instrumentation. Uh, and it was a big song on the dance floor, but it just doesn't resonate with me. And my 21 is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by Elton John. To me, it was an unnecessary Beatles cover. Uh, he made it twice as long as the Beatles version. Of course, the Beatles never did release it as a single. Uh, Elton John plays guitar and sings back up on the song, but it seems like Elton sings it like it's he's in a musical or something, but it's not my favorite. Yeah, uh, a lot of those are going to be coming up for me now, too. Number 25, you mentioned it a ways back, Island Girl by Elton John, that Caribbean kind of Sound to it, Kiki D backing vocals from the Rock of the Westies album about a Jamaican prostitute. Uh, just not a great song. And again, how it got three weeks at number one. Elton was riding the wave. Everything he put out was big at that point. So even the, the not so good stuff. Number 24, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, the cover of the Beatles uh, classic. Two weeks at number one. I, I just don't understand why he felt the urge to put this out uh stick to your own material i mean you need to do beatles covers when you're writing out you and bernie are writing out uh, classic after classic doesn't make sense to me number 23 is have you never been mellow by olivia newton john 
always do respect to Gary. Uh, <laughs> Got to get that in. He's a big Olivia fan. And I, Olivia had some great songs. Uh, it's just, this isn't one of them for me. It's borderline country, adult contemporary pop. Uh, all right, number 22 and 21 are both John Denver songs. 22 is I'm Sorry, uh, the last number one hit of his career. I like the B-side better, the Calypso, well, about uh, Thor Heyerdahl, I guess it was, uh, or Jacques Cousteau, rather. That was the, uh, the better song, and yet this was the A-side, and this was the number one song from John. John Denver's underrated, too. I think he gets a bad rap as a, an artist and a songwriter. I think he put out some really good material. This is just not a favorite of mine. And number 21 is Thank God I'm a Country Boy. That was sort of more up-tempo, hootenanny kind of song. Uh, got a banjo and a fiddle in there. Uh, you know, a down-home song. It was written on John's 30th birthday by his uh, one of his band members named John Martin Summers, I believe. So that was a popular hit, but I'm going to put it in the middle of the pack at 21. Yeah, um, I have it at 20. That's my 20s. Thank God I'm a country boy. Got a little extra credit because a lot of times they would play this at baseball games. And yeah, it has kind of a sing along course. Mm -hmm. And the this live version that became the hit is better than the studio version that's on, on another record. But uh, yeah, it's not his best. Right. And number, oh, and I was going to say that I really like, uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? John Denver on that is really good on, on that okay. album. Yep. The, the band, or with uh, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band and everyone. Yeah. But uh, number 19 is Falling in Love, Hamilton, Joe Frank, and Reynolds, <laughs> LA Soft Rock Trio. But actually, I don't know why it's Hamilton. He got Hamilton and Reynolds, but Joe Frank, he didn't get his last name. Joe Frank Corello. It's not Hamilton Corello and Reynolds. I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, and actually, on this song, there's no Reynolds. Alan Dennison is the one. You know, Reynolds had left the band, but they didn't want to change the name because they'd already had a you know hit or two. But uh, maybe they should have kept the name because after they changed it to Hamilton, Joe Frank, and Dennison, they never had another hit. Right. Rudimentary soft rock. Uh, 18, Loving You by Minnie Ripperton. Uh, this gets a little extra credit because I used to do, uh, my friend would have a bonfire and I would do the CDs, you know, like six or seven mixed CDs. And we had the speakers down there and everything. And I always put a few goofy songs on there, you know, later on after people have been imbibing a little. Lit. <laughs> and the women seems to love to try to hit that high note and love. Right. Woo yeah. Our breaking glass part. I guess if, you're, if you've had a few, it sounds pretty cool. And then when I didn't have it on the next year, it was like, where is it? Where is it? So <laughs> it gets a little extra credit for nostalgic sake. Yeah. But, uh, well, I know a lot of people find that annoying, that part. 17, I have Rhinestone Cowboy, Glenn Campbell. And I love especially the Jimmy Webb songs that Glenn did. And he's a magnificent guitarist. Uh, he just wants to make a living. So it's kind of autobiographical that, you know, he's got to wear this suit to get ahead. But yeah. uh, it's not my favorite by him. But not, and I'm a big Glenn Campbell fan. And number 16, Lady Marmalade, uh, LaBelle. Uh, you learn, voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir is, will you sleep with me tonight? I don't know. If that's all you knew in France, you might get slapped a few times. <laughs> you went to France. But, uh, you know, a lot about Lady Marmalade strutting her stuff in New Orleans, Patty LaBelle singing. You know, that's my 16. Yep. My number 20 is Loving You by Minnie Ripperton. Uh, of course, she was the mother of Maya Rudolph, the actress, comedian. Um, the oh, unique style with the high pitch and birds chirping in, in the background. Very uh, odd song, but it caught on at that time. And unfortunately for many, she died very young at age 31 here. Breast cancer. Terrible. Uh, number 19 is I have the staple singer, so let's do it again. I'm the first one to mention them. Uh, written by Curtis Mayfield, part of the soundtrack. 
for the film of the same name, starring Bill Cosby and Cindy Poitier. Uh, soul music. It's, it's good, but I stuck it at number 19. Number uh, 18, Fire by the Ohio Players, kind of a funk, about a brass soul, uh, saxophone, trumpet, trombones. They were out of Dayton, Ohio, the Ohio Players. I uh, heard this in commercials like Papa John's Pizza and the Toyota RAV4. So they cashed in on that. That was uh, number 18. Number 17 is The Hustle by Van McCoy. I like it a little better than you do, just as an artifact of that time. You know, and I've seen it in movies. I think it was in the Boogie Nights they played it. Uh, disco uh, led to a line dance, became very popular. Uh, what else do I have here? Um, you mentioned Van Mar Van McCoy would not make it out of the 70s alive. He died at age 39. So he had his moment and didn't really live to see it for very long. It's a shame. And my number 16 is Pick Up the Pieces by the Average White Band, an instrumental jazz funk. Uh, they were out of uh, Scotland. So Pick Up the Pieces. They also had a song called Cut the Cake, I believe. But uh, just not, I'm not a huge instrumental guy, so I want to put that in the middle of the pack at 15. That's it. Yep. Or 16, rather. Excuse me. All right. My number 15, because it's Philadelphia, maybe you might have it higher. I don't know. But it's Philadelphia Freedom by Elton John, who did a favor for Billie Jean King and her Philadelphia Freedom's tennis team and wrote this song. Yeah. Has some cool strings and John's got some enterprising vocals. It seems like he's trying too hard to me on to be soulful on this, and he's better when he doesn't try so hard. And yeah, that's my 15. Uh, my 14 is Sister Golden Hair by America, produced by George Martin. But he puts, you know, it puts a nice sheen on the song. It's a simple pop song, kind of elevated by all the musical touches uh, almost sounds like a Jackson Brown song, although it charted higher than any Jackson Brown song. That's uh, that's my 14. I know you're a big America fan, so you might have that higher. I do have it a little higher. 13, uh, listen to what the man said, Paul McCartney and Wings. Uh, or is it, does it have wing, was Wings with it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. This was actually my first Paul McCartney album I got was Venus and Mars. Uh, but it's not my favorite off that album. It's got a nice melody, but there isn't really much to the song. You know, Paul McCartney added Tom Scott improvising on sax, but I don't think that helped enough. But wow. that's my 13. And my 12, I had a lot higher than you. It just, I guess it doesn't bug me that much. And that's, hey, won't you play another Somebody Done Somebody Wrong song, B.J. Thomas Country Cross over hit the title kind of explains the song mm -hmm. uh, number 11 is <clears throat> jive talking by the Bee Gees, the first disco hit off of their album main course it was later appear on the saturday night live or saturday night live saturday night fever soundtrack put the Bee Gees on top of the charts and they kind of ruled in the late 70s yeah has, I like the scratch guitar that it starts off with, and then they got the cool synthesizer riff on there. Very good. My 15 is Get Down Tonight, Casey and the Sunshine Band, uh, Disco Funk, uh, Harry Wayne Casey, also known as KC. He, uh, they were cranking him out, man. It's a, a definite party song. Uh, do a little love, do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. The first of five number one hits by that band. Number 14 is the other KC and the Sunshine Band song. That's the way I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, again, he caught lightning in a bottle, capitalized at the right time for not for really not much talent behind these songs. They're sexual innuendo, innuendo in the lyric, uh, popular in the dance clubs. This was their second number one hit. So I put them back to back at 15 and 14. Number 13 is Lady Marmalade by the uh, Marmalade by the uh, LaBelle, Patty LaBelle, song about a prostitute, explicit French lyrics, uh, produced by Alan Toussaint, written by Bob Crew and Kenny Nolan. Uh, just it, it, a lot of people rave about the song. I, I never got the uh, significance of it, but uh, 
It's listenable. Put it at 13. Number 12, Elton John's Philadelphia Freedom. I don't think it's a quality Elton John song, so I couldn't put it in my top 10. But for this year, it's number uh, 12 out of 35, which isn't terrible. You said written as a favorite of Billie Jean King for the World Team Tennis, the Philadelphia Freedoms. They were friends, and a lot of the money went to charity. Uh, they're both advocates for sexual equality and that type of thing. And she had just come off her big match with Bobby Riggs, where she beat him, and the whole world watched that one. So a lot of, uh, a lot of good stuff came out of that song, I guess, the proceeds. Number 11 is Shining Star by Earth, Wind, and Fire kind of progressive soul funk. Uh, these guys are rock and roll hall of famers. I, I do like, I like the song quite a bit. Written by Maurice White, who's the leader, Philip Bailey and Larry Dunn, the three guys of uh, Earth, Wind and Fire. Surprised it only was number one for one week. It was here and gone. Some of these other ones that were three and four weeks just doesn't add up. But I, I do like the song Shining Star at number 11. So, Tanner, are we going to go back and forth there? We'll go back and forth, yeah. Okay. Number 10 that you mentioned is I Have Fire by the Ohio Players. This was another kind of bonfire song that I would use. <laughs> we had a big bonfire, and we would all stand around with uh, Roman candles to shoot at the bonfire that, you know, had kerosene or whatever to, to, to light it. Mm -hmm. And the first song I would play would usually be a fire. So it would be either this song or... Jimi Hendrix Fire, Ring of Fire, Johnny Cash, or Crazy World of Arthur Brown Fire. But uh, oh, it's, a good so it's a little extra credit, I guess, for that. But, uh, you know, the Ohio players had these funk, atom, funk anthems, and they took advantage of the disco era. Uh, the song is a little bit repetitious, but, you know, and the Ohio players always had those great covers of their albums. But uh, yeah, that's number 10. My number 10 is uh, one we haven't heard yet, and that's Before the Next Teardrop Falls from Freddie Fender. Uh, it was actually a country pop hit written in 1967, that Tex-Mex musical style recorded in both Spanish and English. Uh, it's grown on me through the years. I don't, I don't think I liked it much when it came out, but if you hear it now, it's kind of a nice little tune. He also had a hit that same year, number eight hit, Wasted Days and Wasted Nights. So he, that was his uh, big year in music was 1975. Freddie Fender, number 10. All right. My number nine, I had a little higher than you, is Let's Do It Again, The Staple Singers, written by Curtis Mayfield for the film with Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier. It's got a nice groove. and has a lot of space for Mav Mavis Staples to kind of do her thing. Yep. Pop Staples even gets to do his thing in there a little bit. So cool movie, movie theme song for me. Yeah, it's probably better than I gave it credit for. I just, it's hard to rank 35 songs. I sort of got yeah. lost in the shuffle, but it is a pretty good tune. And the movie's entertaining as well. I've seen the movie. Uh, number nine is one I have a little bit higher than you this time. That's Rhinestone Cowboy by Glenn Campbell. Uh, very popular, sort of became his theme song at that time. It was sort of autobiographical, uh, playing the game to stay on top, and the veteran artist paying his, his, paid his dues survive the ups and downs and still shining like a rhinestone cowboy uh it's a likable song and you gotta like glenn campbell the guy's talented as hell and he had his own tv show uh, back in the day as well and uh, i think everybody liked the guy he's just a real popular dude so that's somebody number nine all right my number eight you probably have this a little higher i'm not as huge of an eagles fan as you are but i got the best of my love the eagles they show off kind of their ability to, with country influences on the song. Don Henley shines on this like simple love song. Uh, but I do, and I do like the nice harmonies on this one. Yeah, believe it or not, I have it at number eight also. We hit on the, oh. on the money on that. It's not my, it's pretty far down on my favorite Eagle songs as much as an Eagle fan as I am. It's, uh, I like Henley's vocals, got the great harmonies, soft rock ballad on the On the Border album, which is an underrated album written by Glenn Fry, Don Henley, and J.D. Souther, their occasional writing partner. Uh, some of the lyrics are decent. Every night I'm lying in bed holding you close to my dreams, thinking about all the things we said and coming apart at the seams, and then they go into the chorus, but it's decent. We tried to talk it over, but the words come out too rough. 
I know you were trying to give me the best of your love. And then they did the harmonies with the oh, 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 oh. So I'll take it from there. Number eight, we hit on that one, which is cool. Okay. And number seven, you mentioned just a little while ago, is Shining Star, Earth, Wind, and Fire, a soulful funk group that took advantage of the disco craze as well. Uh, has some great guitar work on the song and with some brass and wood, 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 wind instruments are really cool, but it's like one of their catchiest hooks. I will say the Earth, Wind, and Fire, unlike a lot, unlike a lot of the funk groups that you you'd buy their album, they had like two singles, and that was all there was. They had some actually deep cuts on some of their albums that are pretty good. But that's my seven. And they are rock and roll hall of famers for a reason, I guess. Number seven for me is Fame by David Bowie from the Young Americans uh, album, I guess. Funky tune. Uh, what can I say about it? Uh, it's a title of his Broadway musical Broadway show that closed after one night, which I learned that in this. I didn't re even remember that, but uh, I think his quote here, I think fame is itself is not a rewarding thing. You must, the most you can say about it is it gets you a seat in restaurants. So that's, he felt, he felt, you know, he played the game. He wasn't thrilled with being famous, but it got him a good seat at the restaurant. It's fine. Uh, it's not my favorite Bowie song, but again, this is a weak year, or so boosted it up and cracked the top ten at number seven. He has so many better hits, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, my number six, you mentioned it as well, is "Pick Up the Pieces." The average white band. Uh, this is kind of nostalgic too, because I remember as a teenager being in the back of the bus with some of the other, some of my friends. And we thought we were cool when we just blurred out every once in a while, pick up the pieces. Right, right. <laughs> we, also, we also did that cut the cake cut too. The cake. Just, just mentioned, so. I think it gets some extra credit for that. Uh, I like the underlying guitar that pushes it into a disco round, but uh, it's a funky song. Uh, with some jazz uh, touches, like you said. Yeah, my number six is Jive Talking by the Bee Gees. Again, this is the a, sort of a comeback song at the time. They were uh, just about to make their mark with the Saturday Night Fever a couple of years down the road, but this, this got them started. Funky, disco, uh, the first top 10 hits in 71 when they had How Can You Mend a Broken Heart. It's got the scratchy guitar and the great bass line. And jive, the word jive is such a 70s term. You hear it on shows like Good Times and the Jeffersons. They'd always bring up, you jive turkey or you jive this and that. It was a term they used in the Bee Gees or a song about it. So it was a solid tune, number six for me. All right. My number five is One of These Nights uh, by the Eagles, Henley and Fry written tune, title track to the Eagles' fourth studio album. Uh, really good Don Henley vocal on this one and some great harmonies. And I really like the high harmony of randy meisner on the refrain on this and yeah it's got a really good uh don felder guitar solo in there it's kind of a song about procrastination with your dreams yeah my number five is listen to what the man said by paul mccartney and wings off the venus and mars album just an optimistic love song it's very poppy uh dave mason's a guest guitar player on here he got a sax added by uh tom scott uh, I, yeah, I like that whole album and I, I do like the song as well. So I went to put it in my top five. Listen to what the man said. Okay. So number four, I've, I've said quite a few of these have nostalgic reasons for being there. And my number four does too. And that's Before the near, Next Teardrop Falls by Freddie Fender. I remember I brought, bought the 45 of this and I'd be at a friend's house and all of a sudden sneak it on and they'd be going, what the heck? And it was bought more as a joke at the beginning, but I grew to kind of love the song. Right. Like squeezes all this emotion out of it. And I, I love these, you know, sings the one song, one verse in Spanish and yeah, kind of a great heartbreak song. Sounds genuine. And I'm kind of, I kind of like a lot of the old country anyway. So that's my four. It is genuine. You can, you can almost hear him singing that with a mariachi band with him. It's, it's a good tune. My number four is, Sister Golden Hair by America. I am a big America fan. Uh, I've seen them nine times through the years. 
This is a catchy little pop song written by Jerry Beckley. He was the blonde haired guy in America. Uh, yeah, it's harmonic. George Martin, you mentioned, produced the album. Uh, acoustic soft rock. I have a 12 string guitar in there. So I went to give it some props and put it pretty high on my list. I couldn't justify it any higher, but I put it at number four. My number three is You're No Good by Linda Ronstadt. You know, three of the first six number one hits from 1975 were all covers of 60s hits. And Linda was a great interpreter. Um, and she, this was actually earlier a hit for Betty Everett, a minor hit, first done by D.D. Warwick, who was Dion's sister, and it was like a number three hit in the UK for the swinging blue jeans. So it's it been a few versions, but I think uh, Linda does the best. If you've seen her on the Min, uh, Midnight Special, her version on that, she really gets into it. She gives the, the, that bluesy soulfulness and kind of makes the song her own. Yeah, I love the song. My number three is Black Water by uh, the Doobie Brothers. Uh, Patrick Simmons on lead vocal. It's got that acapella section, which is cool. I like to hear some funky Dixieland, Pretty Mama, Come Take Me By The Hand, that part. Uh, it's on the album, What Were Once Vices Are Now Habits. Uh, it kind of combines Southern rock, roots rock, uh, and the Doobie Brothers sound. So I uh, think it's a really good song. Put it at number three. Yeah, I'm not a huge Doobie Brothers uh, fan, but I do really like that one. And that's actually my number two. Yep. And But one thing I would say about the Doobie Brothers, I always think about this when I talk about the Doobie Brothers is a review I saw in Rolling Stone by the great Lester Bangs. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Oh, yeah. But he was doing a review. It was their last album. I don't know if they've had an album since this this one. But uh, you see, I remember in the review, he said, some people like the soulfulness of the Tom Johnston-led Doobie Brothers, and some like the pop sensibilities, the Michael McDonald-led Doobie Brothers. I like them how they are now broke up i always remember oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. i always remember that review oh, that's for baby getting a knife uh, i don't know if that's influenced me and or, or not but uh, but i really do like the song like i said patrick simmons the guitarist is the, actually the one that sings lead on this one mm -hmm. and was written by him but uh, i always like the wind chimes and yes. that back porch kind of feel swampy feel yep. and kind of a bluesy funky slow burner definitely Good tune. We both had it pretty high, two and three. My number two is You're No Good by Linda Ronstadt, a huge hit off the Heart Like a Wheel album, which is a really good album. You mentioned her as being an interpreter. and She's one of the best of all time at that. She has a knack of hand cherry picking different tunes off other people's albums and and uh, making them her own. And, you know, she's got the voice to, to carry it off. She can do any style you want, whether it be that torch rock or ballads or even country uh, she can have a little soul in her vote in her voice as well uh, yeah i have all her albums from the 70s she was really a favorite of mine at the time i know it's not popular to say that with all the heavy rock and stuff that went out but i, I love linda ronstadt and i love her music so uh, this is number two for me all right looks like we're gonna have different number ones here yeah. <laughs> well actually and I will say that there isn't a song in here that I thought this is great and better than any of the other songs. Uh, like in past years, there's been some really great songs. I think there's a lot of pretty good songs. Right. It was hard to find what number one was, but uh, I picked Fame, the David Bowie tune. It's kind of his exploration of soul music. Yeah. It's brought him his biggest success. He called it Plastic Soul. But uh, it's fun. fame's like a funky tune as one of these best grooves, but it's yeah. not really my favorite David Bowie song, like you said, but it's based on a riff by Carlos Alomar, who was the session guitarist. And then David Bowie and John Lennon started throwing lyrical ideas to you know, make the song about fame. And of course, they would, they would know something about the weirdness of fame, John Lennon and David Bowie. It's kind of playful, spiteful, sarcastic, and just fun. And you can hear uh john lennon on backing vocals on the song that's like, like I said, it's not my favorite bowie song but yeah this year it gets a little bump up i guess 
Yeah, it, it is a good song. I, I sort of downplayed. I think I had it number eight or seven or eight or whatever. But I, I do like it. I just like that Ziggy Stardust, Hunky Dory stuff better. Mm-hmm. But it's still, you know, good for the time, for the era. And, you know, Bowie was the chameleon. He would change his style as he went through with each album. So you got to give him credit for that. My number one is One of These Nights by the Eagles. I get Don Henley on lead vocal. You mentioned Randy Meisner, who adds so much with the high harmony. Don Felder on guitar, uh, off the, the title track of the uh, Eagles' fourth album, One of These Nights. A little bit different than most of their songs. It's got a little bit of R&B, a little punch in the, vo- in the, uh, in the vocal here by Felder. Uh, but I'm an Eagles guy, and I wanted to put that at the top. It was a close call for me, either that or the Ronstadt song. I like them both a lot. That, that finishes it out at number one. All right, now we're going to do our uh, honorable mentions. These are, we each pick five songs out as we do in each of the series here. And uh, five songs that we like to single out that never made it to the top of the charts, but we still think are really good songs and representative of the era and our own musical tastes. So what do you have as your, your five tunes, Randy? The first one I have is Young Americans by David Bowie, which only made it to 28. And I like more than fame. Me too. It's, it's, it's got a cooler uh, R&B feel. And the next one I have is Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen, okay. which only made it to 23. Yep. And that would definitely be the number one song of this year if it made it to number one. No doubt. But uh, next one I have is Trampled Underfoot by Led Zeppelin, which made it to number 38. Uh, Black Friday by Steely Dan, which only made it to 37. And off my favorite Bob Dylan album, Tangled Up in Blue, which only made it to number 31 that year. But there's some great songs that didn't do that well in the charts. Well, we have three the same. Uh, Born to Run, Bruce Springsteen, 23. Uh, Young Americans, 28, David Bowie, which is a much better song than fame. And uh, Tangled Up in Blue, which is an unbelievably great song by Bob Dylan at number 31 I, I mean I understand why it wasn't a pop hit but it's one of the best songs he's ever written in my opinion uh, great storytelling the other two that I have that, that differ a little bit I have at 17 by Janice Ian number three on the charts I really like the song about a, a teenage girl who's just sort of like the ugly duckling not fitting in and she learned the truth at 17 it's a, it's a masterpiece at that time and one of my favorite Elton John songs, Someone Saved My Life Tonight, made it to number four. That was my uh, the other one I'd like to sing a lot. It's one of my favorite Elton songs. And uh, about a friend in need and suicide, possibly, and what drama and all that kind of stuff. So very cool. I, I can't believe that didn't, didn't make number one when he was anything he would release be number one. And I know. <laughs> And then this other top, like uh, the remake of uh, Lucy in the Sky and Bad, uh, well, not Bad Blood, the Island Girl. Come on. That, that Someone Saved My Life Tonight blows both those songs away for sure. So that was fun. I uh, really enjoyed doing the series with you. We did 11 videos, really, when you go from 75 through, or 65 through 75. My math's all screwed up. But uh, that was really fun. We'll have to come up with another series to uh to contribute together and collaborate on it was a lot of fun doing these and rehashing and reliving that era of music you know a lot of we took a little bit of crap in the uh comments people just saying you know a lot of these songs are bad and, you know dribble and this and that but i don't mind i mean you, you take the good with the bad and it does bring back memories and i, I just thought it was a fun series to do the way we did it yeah. I enjoyed doing it with you. I thank everybody that that uh, listened and commented. Uh, but yeah, it was fun to see some of the songs that, you know, even the surprising songs that sometimes that made it to number one. Yeah, that's another thing. It's like a history lesson, too, because you find out what actually made it to number one and some of the better songs that never made it that we look back today and, and revere and think they were the best songs but not necessarily in the pop charts but you have to take that with a grain of salt it is what it is so now check out randall nelson his channel he's just back he'll be starting to put out videos now uh soon 
always great to collaborate with him. We'll see him in live streams. Him and Glenn and I get together and do shows on Friday. We just did a Bruce Springsteen video, top 25 songs. Check that out. I'll actually put the link down below. If you'd like to hear some more feedback on that. That was a lot, a lot of fun to do for our Springsteen fans like Glenn and Randy and myself. So leave some comments from 1975. We'd like to hear your favorite songs or even your top 10. I, we don't expect you to do 35 because there's so much mediocrity here. But what songs uh, are your favorites that we talked about? I'm sure there's some different ones. So for Randy, this is Rich. Thank you for watching the series. Really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. And we'll try and come up with something else that we can combine on. Take it easy, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye.